to another. Today, Olympus innovations help lead the way in everything from consumer electronics to medical technology. Wonder what doors we'll open tomorrow. How you look at things matters. For instance, if you knew Mass Mutual Financial Group included Oppenheimer Funds, Inc., as well as Bering Asset Management and Babson Capital Management, giving our companies a presence on four continents and $370 billion in assets under management. Would you look at us in the same way? The right perspective changes everything. CSI, the new season, Thursday, September 22nd on CBS. It's the last weekend to get 100 hot specials at Rooms to Go. That's 100 hot specials through Labor Day only. Plus, make your first payment in April 2007. No money down, no minimum purchase, no interest, no payments until April 2007. Rooms to Go pays the interest for you. Choose from the latest new looks for fall. Get savings on 100 hot specials. Next day delivery on in-stock merchandise and make your first payment April 2007. That's 100 specials, 100 reasons to shop Rooms to Go. Offer ends Labor Day. Right now, you'll save thousands with Ford employee pricing. Plus, you'll receive a brand new color TV, but only at Armstrong Ford of Homestead. New 2005 F-150 Explorer Expedition and receive a brand new color TV. If you're a homeowner with financial problems, beware of companies trying to take advantage of you. Home Plus Solutions is here to help. Our friendly, knowledgeable staff can assist you with all these financial options to help protect your home. Remember, bankruptcy is not an option. Call Home Plus Solutions today. Now, live, this is CBS 4 News at 6. First at 6, a massive airlift in New Orleans. Military choppers moving in on the city to move hurricane victims out. Meanwhile, South Florida is coming to the aid of storm victims by sending supplies and taking in evacuees. Along the Gulf Coast, the cavalry proving, uh, providing, that is, hope and help for hurricane victims. CBS 4 has a team of reporters in Kenner, Louisiana, just outside New Orleans. We begin with Brian Andrews. Hi, Joanna. Uh, we're here in the parking lot of uh, what was a strip mall uh, here in Kenner, and you can see behind us uh, the bricks that have fallen uh, as a result of the winds from this uh, catastrophic hurricane ca that uh, came blowing through. Uh, earlier today, we went into the city, about a 10-mile drive from here, uh, to go and take a look at uh, how people were getting out. Really emotional day as we saw mothers carrying naked children. We saw feces in the street. We saw dead bodies. We saw people who were hot, tired, and exasperated waiting to get out. And here's a look at what we saw. One on the ground, five more in the air, one taking off. Two more helicopters coming in for a landing at a parking lot near the New Orleans Convention Center. These are the helicopters coming in for the rescue. They're from the U.S. military, the Coast Guard, even Singapore's Air Force. They're all part of a massive airlift of the thousands of people stranded in New Orleans downtown. Take a look at the line for the ride out of the city. And this is the line for that line. Gobs of people, all of them near wit's end, ready to get out. I'll help give you a push. You must be so happy to be getting out of here. Oh, no, you just don't know. You just don't know. All right, I'll, I'll help you push. Ready? Here we go. This evacuation helping the elderly and disabled board flights first. They're trying to keep families together, although some had to be split up. But they know they'll meet again in a better place very shortly. So happy. We thank the Lord. We're very happy. And I want to tell my family we're all right. And we're getting somewhere safely. This is the brutal reality of what life is like in downtown New Orleans after this storm. We're in front of the convention center, and we're even having to step over bodies. 
There's a line just down this way. It stretches about three blocks long. These are people who are trying to get on a bus as the buses are now coming into downtown New Orleans to get people out of this awful situation. I don't know if you can bring your dog. How long have you had this animal? <laughs> we saw it all outside the New Orleans Convention Center. People living in filth, babies in bicycle baskets, dead bodies under blankets, dead bodies in body bags near trash. The looks of desperation and the look of relief on some faces as people stuck here for days without food or water were finally leaving for a much better place. This was one of those situations where you know you've encountered the stories that you'll always remember and the images that you will never forget. Coming up at 7 o'clock right here on Channel 4, we're going to be doing a special hour-long program on what's happening here in Louisiana, and I'll have a chance to show you at that time what it was like outside the Superdome earlier today. And later in this newscast, you're going to be joined by my colleague, CBS4 investigator Mike Kirsch, who has spent some time in the downtown area with his photojournalist, Rudy Marshall. It is a, an amazing story as to what they uncovered as to how the police force uh, is dealing with the stress of all of this. And my colleague, Storm Specialist uh, David Bernard, he actually had a chance to go in the French Quarter. We'll be bringing you their stories coming up later on in this broadcast. For now, for the CBS4 News team in Kenner, Louisiana, I'm Brian Andrews. In Pascagoula, Mississippi, the National Guard handed out much needed supplies for residents. One by one, the guardsmen loaded up cars as they passed through long lines. This kind of relief could go on for days or even weeks as the area is cleared of debris and electricity restored. Residents in Biloxi are doing whatever they can to survive after blocks of homes were wiped out by Katrina. Some are taking shelter under anything that provides a roof, including boat yards. A day. A day after visiting the disaster-struck Gulf Coast, President Bush is ordering additional troops into the region. In his weekly radio address today, the president announced he is sending 7,000 troops to join the some 4,000 already there. He also signed the emergency $10.5 billion disaster aid package for victims. The president calling it unacceptable that many survivors aren't getting the help they need and promising to change that. We will complete the evacuation as quickly and safely as possible. We will not let criminals prey on the vulnerable. And we will not allow bureaucracy to get in the way of saving lives. The president heads back to the area on Monday. He has canceled a Labor Day speech in order to do that. Dozens of hurricane victims leaving the evacuation zone will be arriving in South Florida tonight. CBS 4's Dave Malkoff is live in Opelika with more. Day. Hey, Juwan, I'm standing inside what used to be a hangar for the Coast Guard, but now it is kind of an impromptu hospital. They have set this up with the VA and also Miami Children's Hospital and other people who are coming to the help of all those people who are on a C-130 plane flying here right now. They don't exactly know who is on that plane, but as the VA Associate Chief of Staff will report to you, they are ready for anything. This area here will have a surgeon, two nurses, litter barriers to take the patients out of the aircraft. And then we'll triage the patients here. We don't know if we're going to have patients. We don't know if family members, little ones are coming. If pediatrics is coming, they'll be taken to this unit here, Miami Children's Hospital. There's even a possibility that you could have dogs and cats coming in here. And we are prepared for that. You can see the cage. We'll put the pets inside the cage. This will be lift up, of course. Patients will be routed through here. Monitors for blood pressure, pulse, temperature. We have in this room here, our pharmacy, medications that you can see right there. Let me tell you, let me show you what the uh, pediatric section is. As you can see, the equipment is here to see if we need whatever needs for the uh, pediatrics patient. Let me show you this area, because this is where the family is going to be coming in. All the families that are going to be coming in, they'll be sick here. Red Cross will be here with them. Our main mission here is triage the patient and get them out as soon as possible to the, where they need to go. But you could be here for a very long time. This yes. hangar could be a hospital for months. It's already turned into a hospital, and, uh, and, it, and you're right. In the memorandum of understanding between the Coast Guard and the VA is that we can use this how, how, as much as we need to use it. As he was saying there, this could be months and months that they are here on a 24-hour basis. There was one time 
over in Tampa not so long ago where they had a C-130 come in with only 20 minutes notice. That's why they have to have a skeleton crew here at all times. And this will be here for quite a while because there's a lot of patients who need a lot of care at a lot of places around the country. We are live in Opelok. I'm Dave Malkoff, CBS 4 News. Carnival Cruise Lines is joining relief efforts for victims of Hurricane Katrina. It is allowing the federal government to charter three of its ships, the Ecstasy, Sensation, and Holiday, to be used as shelters for more than 4,000 storm victims. Two ships will house evacuees in Galveston, Texas. The other will likely be docked in Mobile, Alabama, for the next six months. Carnival is apologizing to passengers whose vacations will have to be canceled, but everyone will get a refund. Residents in Miami-Dade are also trying to help out. Commissioner Jose Pepe Diaz joining volunteers at his di district office to add supplies on a truck already filled with other donations. Those supplies include water, blankets, diapers, and canned goods. South Florida's outpouring of support has been wonderful, but so much more is needed, folks. CBS 4's Maggie Rodriguez came back from maternity leave to help in the effort. She's live in our Neighbors for Neighbors phone bank. Welcome back, Maggie. Thank you so much, Juwan. I just felt like I'm sure so many of you at home are feeling watching those pictures on TV. I couldn't just sit there and do nothing. So I decided to come in and, and remind all of you how you can help in this effort. Neighbors for Neighbors, we are here like we have always been. We were born back in 1992 after Hurricane Andrew and we helped South Florida rebuild then. And now we're doing the same thing, trying to do the same thing with your help in the Gulf Coast. And our slogan is together we can make a difference and that's already happening. I want to give you some examples of ways that your donations have helped in the devastated region. We have some pictures to show you of uh, some of the people who have donated and some of the goods they have donated. Neighbors for Neighbors has helped organize a mobile medical unit for the town of Picayune, Mississippi. Crosby Memorial Hospital, which is the hospital there that services about 90,000 residents, right now has no power, it has extensive roof damage, and it's in desperate need of supplies. So today we loaded that semi-truck, packed with medical equipment and generators, and it left for the Gulf Coast this afternoon. Also, this is incredible. Charter Air Incorporated donated a 727 that we could use, capable of carrying up to 48,000 pounds of cargo. The Phoenix Fuel Corporation donated the pilot and the fuel, and we had everything we needed, so we're, they're going to donate. Um, we're transporting, as we speak, much-needed supplies that were donated by the organization Stop Hunger. Another thing, on a smaller scale, right here in South Florida, a group of children in the Doral area who said they were heartbroken by the plight of families out there, families just like their own, held a bake sale today, and they raised more than $800. They are donating all of it to Neighbors for Neighbors. If you would like to send your support, please call us. Our number is 305-597-4404. We've also set up a toll-free number for you. It's 877 877- 7-411-4242. If you forget those numbers, we'll have them at the bottom of the screen. You can also go to our website, neighborsforneighbors.org. This is a live look at our phone bank. Right now, when I came on the air, the greatest thing happened. The phone started ringing. I had been standing up here for about 20 minutes just chatting with our volunteers and lamenting that the phones were not ringing. So thank you for making those phones ring. If you've already given, we thank you, but we remind you that the need is great. So call and maybe they can help you come up with a more creative way uh, to donate, maybe a way you haven't thought of. I'll be here throughout the evening, and we'll be back at 7 o'clock with our special report. Live in the Neighbors for Neighbors phone bank, Maggie Rodriguez, CBS 4 News. Maggie, thank you. And for more information on relief and recovery efforts, log on to our website at cbs4news.com. And again, don't forget to join us tonight for a one-hour Hurricane Katrina special and telethon. We'll bring you the latest out of the Gulf Coast and tell you how you can help the victims. Hurricane 2005 in the path of Hurricane Katrina airs at 7 p.m. and then again on our sister station, UPN 33, tomorrow at 1 p.m. This special edition of CBS 4 News is coming right back. That's right, folks. But first, a reminder, our Neighbors for Neighbors volunteers are ready to take your calls and your donations for Katrina's victims. The number is 305-597-4404 or toll free at 1-877-411-4242. Well, we had some storms to kick off the holiday weekend. Will they stick around through Labor Day? And we need to talk about the tropics. We'll have details on that coming up. Urgent. Employee pricing plus. Save up to 67.38 on Pacifica. Save up to 71.31 on Town & Country. Employee pricing plus at Day Jeep Chrysler. Southwest 158th Street and US 1.
Marshall's Law of Footwear, Law Number 11. You can't get arrested for getting high on heels. Law Number 16. For the price most people pay for one shoe, you can get two. Marshall's Law Number 32. If shoes weren't so important, people wouldn't be measured in feet. Get kick butt brand name shoes and still foot the bill. That's Marshall's Law. County Line Lexus makes the Lexus Golden Opportunity Sales event even more golden. Right now, lease a fabulous new RX or ES330 loaded with leather, CD, and sunroof for only $3.99 per month. $3.99 for only 36 months. Take advantage of huge Lexus Golden Opportunity savings, plus sign and drive on every new Lexus with absolutely no money down and no money out of pocket during the Lexus Golden Opportunity Sales event going on right now at County Line Lexus, home of the Lexus way. If you see news in the making, dial Star CBS4 on your T-Mobile cellular phone. The aftermath of Hurricane Katrina is taking a major toll on New Orleans police officers. Absolutely, and we want to take you live now once again to Kenner, Louisiana. CBS4's Mike Kirsch is there with that story. Mike? Well, this is just a terrible story. We arrived downtown, myself and Rudy Marshall, this afternoon, and uh, I saw an officer in uniform crumbled against a wall crying. He was uh, very upset, very distraught. I asked, who is this? He said, this is the police chief of the city of New Orleans, a man who had crumbled with grief after learning, after his force had come under uh, a lot of pressure, a lot of criticism after the way they've handled things here. He learned this morning that two of his officers in the last 24 hours have committed suicide. New Orleans police chief Edwin Compass collapses upon learning of the suicide of a police officer and close friend from his command staff an officer he had just sent home suffering from too much stress. I saw him this morning, I said, Paul, take the day off, relax, because he don't know where his wife is at. He thinks she's dead. He lost his house. He's been on the street, he was out there with me last night in that crowd. They were shooting at our vehicles. This is real. I don't know what you people out there think is going on here. This is real. This is the second time in 24 hours that a New Orleans cop has turned a gun on himself. How are the men and women here dealing with the, the news of the two officers killing themselves? Well, anytime you lose a police, police is like a brotherhood. You know, anytime you, anytime you lose a guy who wears a blue shirt, it's hard. You know, especially to that. You know, when they kill in a line of duty, you know, that's part of the job. You know, when you come on a job, you always know that risk is there. When, when, when you take your own life, you know, it's kind of hard because you can never understand suicide. I don't care how many times you try to sit down and analyze it, you never understand suicide. You know, you never know what goes on inside of people's heads. New Orleans cops have been under fire for days now for abandoning their posts. They've been accused of looting, and those who remain on this ragtag force no, hear bro. constantly that they're not doing enough to help. Police ain't doing nothing. Why are they pulling guns out on people? We don't have no guns on us. What are we supposed to do? I'm trying to get out of here. They, they tend to judge law enforcement here, saying that, oh, they're, they're not doing their jobs or they don't know what they're doing. Does not that doing their you? jobs. Does that bother you? Not doing their jobs. We got men who lost their families that's out there putting criminals in jail. We're getting shootouts every night. They're shooting at our police cars. They tried to take me hostage. Not doing our jobs. Sir, no, sir, that's not me, sir, Chief. Sir, Chief, that's not me. Let's, that's let's, not me, we gotta, sir. We gotta, we gotta clean this up, Chief. I'm, I'm, I'm giving. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm giving. Sorry. It's not his fault. Chief. No, 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 I'm sir. Sorry. I'm. I'm. Okay. I'm. I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm, re I'm reflecting what we're I'm hearing sorry. out there. I apologize. Don't no, no problem. Edit that. No, no, no problem. I apologize. Well, it's fair to say this is a very demoralized police department right now. They're looking for brighter days, but right now they've got a very difficult time. They are getting some help from the National Guard and other authorities in this town, but uh, a very difficult time for this police force. Let's try to go to something a little more positive right now. I want to bring in my colleague, David Bernard, our storm, storm specialist who's come into CBS4, took a tour today of uh, the French Quarter here, and you've got some interesting insight, David. That's right, Mike. It's been a long week for me here in New Orleans, a lot of emotion. I've seen a lot of horrible things. I was determined, however, to make it into the French Quarter. That's the heart and soul of this city. I wanted to see how it turned out. And believe it or not, in true New Orleans fashion, I ran into some old friends. We upstairs. I did. In true New Orleans fashion, it didn't take long to find friends. I left about six weeks ago, baby. You didn't even know. Because the last I saw 
thing to you was in there getting yeah. coffee. That's right, every morning. Every morning. I know. I, I love I you and Diane well. Miss Viola Madeira was a familiar face in and around the coffee shop. She's okay, but needs to reunite with family. I lost my van. I lost my 10 grandbabies because I don't know where they at. I want Felicia, Nicole, Vanessa, and Lisa to call me at 524-3525. I am at the hotel where I work at. My old friend, Mr. Jacques, stubborn as ever, stayed for the storm. He's lived here since 1963. I mean, everything is gone. I'm here. And uh, at night, it's simple, <clears throat> too, uh, too, too warm, you know. I leave my door open. Can New Orleans come back? I hope so. One thing for sure, New Orleanians will always do it their own way. There's no other place in the world like New Orleans, no matter where you go. This is, this is it. And then those that want to tear it down, you know what? Tear your own city down, leave always alone. Well, uh, that last gentleman surely reflected the spirit of New Orleans that I think will eventually come back to the area. And that first lady I found, Miss Viola, who I used to always see down by the coffee shop, she's doing okay. And I was able to contact WWL Radio earlier on today, and they're trying to get authorities set up to go in and pick those folks up and get them out to their family just located outside the suburban area of New Orleans. They just didn't have any means of getting there. So it felt really good to be back there and see that the French Quarter is in relatively good shape. Reporting live with Brian Andrews, Mike Kirsch, I'm CBS4 Storm Specialist David Bernard, live in Kenner, Louisiana. Well, let's hope all those yeah. families can be reunited. It is Indeed. so heartbreaking. It is. It is. Well, straight ahead, meteorologist Elizabeth Hart returns with your complete forecast. Plus, the Dolphins reportedly named their starting quarterback. Jill Martin has the latest on who won the top spot coming up in sports. Closed captioning sponsored by City Furniture. Now offering same-day delivery seven days a week. Everybody wants a great deal on a new car, but not any dealership can deliver. Well, at Esserman International Volkswagen, you want it, you got it. You want a brand new 2005 Jetta Value Edition loaded with extras for just $229 a month? You got it. You want it with no down payment and no security deposit? You got it. You want scheduled maintenance included for the life of your loan? You got it. Esserman International Volkswagen. You want it, we got it. So get it. Esserman International, International Volkswagen. Hey, want to party over at our house? Yes! Great, we'll play some games. Grab a bite to eat. Oh, invite your friends. We have plenty of room. And tell them to bring a bathing suit. Mikasuki Resort and Gaming. You bet you're going to have a great time. Ride a 2005 Expedition and get Ford Family Plan savings of over $9,300. Now at your South Florida Ford dealer. You gotta ride it, ride it. Well, we ran into some ugly weather today, yeah. didn't we? Yeah, and it's kind of what we expected, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. There, believe it or not, is a little front or a washed out trough over us. It's been a while since mm -hmm. we've seen anything like that. It mm -hmm. came down from the north, uh, and it's going to kind of be the focusing mechanism for some more storms. But things mm -hmm. may be looking a little bit better. Some slightly cooler temperatures headed oh, our way. Good. Yeah, all right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers. In fact, they're slightly cooler right now because we have rain cooled air. 78 in western Miami-Dade here in weather control. 78 up in Fort Lauderdale. And it is much warmer down in the Keys. 
Northeast because they are looking at mostly clear conditions right now. Humidity, yep, that's relentless. And of course, with the new rainfall, it is running high tonight at 96%. And the winds, this is a new development coming in now out of the north northwest at about five miles per hour. I want to show you a couple of radar vantage points because depending on where you are, where you, where you may be headed out on this Saturday evening, you are going to run into a couple of downpours. Uh, the coverage is actually sort of becoming a little less uh, covered now, but we do have some pretty impressive storms sitting just offshore, and the motion here is from the north down to the south. So west of Fort Lauderdale, pretty good downpour right now, and another one that will just kind of clip Aventura and then kind of roll on down towards uh, Miami Beach and the downtown area. Let's expand it out and show you what's been happening since 1 p.m. because that's when things really kind of got activated. And you can see a lot of red showing up here in uh, the eastern part of South Florida and also on the west coast from uh, Fort Myers down to Naples into Marco Island. And we did have some storms in the upper keys, but the middle and lower keys, pretty decent day. I want to point out a couple of things here to you. Focus your eyes on this vicinity right here over the Bahamas. You'll notice 12 hours ago we had some thunderstorm activity. Now notice today it's kind of expanded. This is right along a trough that is nearly stationary right now. Nothing significant in the way of development uh, in the next few hours, but because of the proximity to us, yeah, that one has our attention. So we're going to be watching that, and we may in fact see a more organized area of low pressure developing there in the next couple of days. Now that is Tropical Storm Maria, just barely a tropical storm tonight, approaching hurricane force. This is the visible satellite, which are our daytime pictures, and you'll notice the comma shape here becoming much more defined. Of course, we lose it once once the sun starts to go down, but uh, a pretty impressive storm. Thankfully, Maria is expected to stay out there over the Atlantic. So the location 740 miles east southeast of Bermuda right now winds at 70 miles per hour. So we're just below hurricane force and the motion is to the northwest at 16 miles per hour. Eventually, Maria is going to take that turn to the north and eventually heading on out to the northeast. So at this point, we're not anticipating any issues with uh, landfall or anything of that nature. So again, here's this area of low pressure pressure right along a washed out frontal system and the models are kind of in dissension as to which way it's going to go, but there is at least a chance that we will see it moving back to the west. So here's your forecast for tonight. Storms will be lingering. We will have a little bit of a cooler breeze, 78 for the low, and then the storms around during the day tomorrow, 88 for your high. Boaters, winds will be picking up and here's a look at the rest of your holiday forecast. Have a good one. All right, folks, Miami Dolphins head coach Nick Saban has reportedly made a decision on a starting quarterback. Who could it be? CBS 4's Jill Martin is here with more on that. Jill? Well, the question has been Feely or Farad, but now it seems Gus is a go, and AJ has gone from possible starter to possible trade bait. Farad started the final four exhibition games, and he wasn't stellar, but he was clearly better than his competition. According to published reports, Gus will be a go in the season opener September 11th against Denver. Meanwhile, it looks like Sage Rosenfels bumped Feely off for the number two spot. Against the Falcons, Sage completed 17 of 25 passes for 217 yards and two touchdowns. And as for A.J. Feely, he struggled all preseason, and reports out say he could be waived by the end of the day or possibly traded. The Finns needed to get down to 53 players by 6 p.m. today. Among others, the team has reportedly cut defensive tackle Larry Chester. Jill Martin, CBS 4 Sports. All right, Jill, thanks. Stay with us, folks. Be right back. The Miami Home Design and Remodeling Show, September 2nd through 6th, Miami Beach Convention Center. Improve your home inside and out. See the finest furniture, accessories, remodeling, and decorating. Win a six-day Windjammer Barefoot Cruise for two. Meet TV's Hildy Santo Tomas. Today through Tuesday, Miami Beach Convention Center. The Home Design and Remodeling Show. Austin Burke has been the original suit warehouse in South Florida since 1945. Barry, why is Austin Burke the leader? Austin Burke is the leader in South Florida because of price, service, and selection. Guys, if you really want to save a lot of money on designer clothing, this is the store. We have Super 150 pants, regularly $200, $99. We have Giorgio Armani, Canali, all the designers, starting from $149.99. Austin Burke, 2601 Northwest 6th Avenue in Miami. Call 305-576-2714. 
Night sweats, they go on, then off, then on. Hot flashes, then something else comes off. If menopausal symptoms are disrupting your life, Premarin is approved to treat symptoms and prevent bone loss. If you don't have symptoms, consider non-estrogen treatment instead of an estrogen like Premarin to prevent bone loss. Premarin should not be used to prevent and may increase the risk of heart disease, heart attack, stroke, or dementia, and may increase the risk of breast cancer and blood clots. So use it for the shortest time based on goals and risks. If you have a uterus, estrogen increases the risk of uterine cancer. I'm soaked. I'm dry. I'm cold. I'm hot. I'm not. My doctor prescribed Premarin. Premarin is not right for every woman. Discuss its use regularly with your doctor. Don't use Premarin if you've had unusual vaginal bleeding, breast or uterine cancer, blood clots, liver problems, stroke or heart attack, or think you're pregnant. Side effects may include vaginal yeast infections, leg and abdominal cramps. With five dosage strengths of Premarin, your doctor can choose the lowest effective dose for you. Isn't it time you asked about Premarin? I'm so ready. South Florida, now is the time to give to the hurricane relief effort. Our Neighbors for Neighbors volunteers are ready to take your donation. The number is 305-597-4404 or toll free at 1-877-411-4242. That's it for CBS 4 News at 6. CBS Evening News is next, followed by our hurricane special at 7. When I drove to work by myself, I spent thousands a year on gas. Can you imagine with today's gas prices? But since I've started sharing my ride with Chris, Ricky, and Maria, I also share the cost. Carpooling to work is the way to go. Check it out. Save on gas, parking, maintenance, commute time. Enjoy the company. Help reduce pollution. Log on to 1-800-234-RIDE today and find out why carpooling is the smart move. Or call 1-800-234-RIDE. That's 1-800-234-RIDE. Did I mention it helps make new friends? It's quite impressive. For three consecutive years. We have been recognized. By J.D. Power and Associates. For giving our patients. An outstanding experience. The first. The first in the nation to achieve this distinction. Three years in a row is Mercy Hospital. Mercy Hospital. Mercy Hospital. Mercy Hospital. Mercy Hospital. Defining quality. Employee Pricing Plus. Save up to 8283 on Grand Cherokee. Save up to 5655 on Jeep Liberty. Employee Pricing Plus at Dade Jeep Chrysler. Southwest 158th Street and US 1. The evacuation of the sick and injured from New Orleans moves into higher gear as relief efforts step up along the Gulf Coast. Still a huge medical and humanitarian crisis remains. I'm John Roberts in New Orleans, and that's where we'll begin tonight. I'm Thalia Shuras in New York. Evacuees by the thousands are arriving in Houston, where the Astrodome has reached its limit. And mental health workers face the challenge of healing the hurt for the smallest hurricane victims of all. This is the CBS Evening News with Thalia Shuras. Good evening, everyone. Five days after Hurricane Katrina battered the Gulf Coast and swamped New Orleans, the flow of supplies in and the transport of victims out seem to have finally gained momentum. Here's the latest. Evacuation operations are now concentrated on the New Orleans Convention Center, where an estimated 30,000 people had been stranded. Rescue officials say 5,000 people have been plucked off rooftops, but they have no idea how many are still isolated in their homes. The Pentagon is sending 7,000 soldiers and Marines along with 10,000 more National Guard troops into the region over the next three days. The major U.S. airlines have started an unprecedented airlift of victims from Louis Armstrong Airport, while the federal government announced it is chartering three Carnival Cruise Line ships to house evacuees for the next six months. And more fires are burning across New Orleans, some caused by ruptured gas lines, others because of arson. We have correspondents across the hurricane zone tonight. John Roberts in New Orleans heads up our coverage. John. Good evening to you, Thalia, and forgive me if I have to speak up a little bit, but a National Guard helicopter has just landed at their base of operations right here beside us. The National Guard is still very needed in this city because the humanitarian crisis here in New Orleans is far from over. 
and we still have no reliable estimate of the number of dead. But there are signs tonight that the very worst of the crisis may be easing at last. Relief and assistance are more visible with each passing hour. And for the thousands of survivors who have just barely been hanging on, the turnaround has not come a moment too soon. It was the answer to a week of prayers, a massive evacuation of survivors on the west side of New Orleans. This is probably the biggest uh, civilian airlift in the history of the United States, but this is unprecedented. Helicopter after helicopter arrived to take away people who were literally on their last legs. Most of these people, pregnant, children, people who can't walk. 10,000 people had been out here. You gotta help them. And for the ones remaining, a way out couldn't come fast enough. We need buses. That's all we asking for right now. So we can move on, go take us a bath, get us some rest, get us some food. The operation was a godsend, but the fact it was five days in coming didn't sit well. If you can take care of another country, what about home? That was a message echoed by almost everyone here, including New Orleans mayor, who said this to President Bush. The response uh, was just not good enough, uh, and we needed help. I think the nation woke up uh, to this issue, and I think the nation started to demand that something be done and things are getting done. Thank you. By late this afternoon, the Superdome was all but evacuated, and the National Guard had also made a good dent in the 30,000 storm victims who'd lived in the squalor at the convention center. We should all go to heaven because I feel like we've lived through hell. Mister, right now, if I ever get off this city, I'll never come back again. I'm just so depressed and stressed out. It was still a scene out of a war zone downtown. On litters and in wheelchairs, paramedics carted the sick and injured to safety. People were carried out on anything that could carry them. Captain Joel Lynch just got back from a tour of duty in Iraq. His impressions of all this? You're near the convention center, you've been there, you've, you've smelled how bad it is, you see the people in despair and the thousands of them in the street. It wasn't that bad in Baghdad. There is one ray of light tonight. As quickly as things had been deteriorating here, New Orleans mayor told me late today, he believes they may have turned a corner. Heartening though the individual signs of improvement around this city may be, they do not disguise the very real medical crisis that still threatens the most vulnerable of those who remain. Byron Pitts has spent the day with the medical personnel who have been waging a battle against very tough odds. Tonight in New Orleans, there is no shortage of good intentions, but good intentions alone cannot save lives. Volunteer James Clark, a paramedic from Sacramento, California, drove his own car, brought in his own medical supplies. Uh, I would call it orga organized chaos. Organized I think it's, chaos. Yeah. He's watched three elderly women die at the New Orleans Convention Center in the past three days. It's bad here. It could well be worse at the airport, with Senate Majority Leader Bill Frist tore today. 30 people have died here since Wednesday. Triage is going on and going on in a very well and a coordinated way. There's a huge backlog of people. People continue to come in, and it's obviously going to be days before we can get full control. Local doctors and paramedics are doing the very best they can, today using shopping carts and office chairs as gurneys. Their emergency vehicle, a U-Haul truck. Dr. Juliet Saucy is director of the New Orleans EMTs. Everyone on her staff lost their homes. They've all been in the same clothes since Sunday. But still, they do what they've been trained to do. We um, have about 71 of us um, in combination with the military, but we can use all the help we can get. 71. By this afternoon, the National Guard had started airlifting patients, the elderly and children from flooded hospitals downtown, to refugee camps outside the city. Beverly Perry is 62, retired New Orleans school administrator. She's also diabetic. Do you have enough medicine? No, because I'm on insulin twice a day. So this week I've been taking it once in the morning and trying to stretch it. Working with very few medical supplies and even less sleep, those with the best of intentions are wearing thin. I was so mad yesterday I almost went home because I just felt like I couldn't do anything. And then I, I drove about 130 miles outside of Louisiana or outside of New Orleans uh, and just turned around and came back. I didn't know what I could do today or if I could do anything, but I figured I'm better used here than I am back home. James Clark estimates he's gotten about eight hours sleep since Tuesday. He's treated about 800 patients. 
but he's finally reached the end of his rope, so he is headed back to California tomorrow. Now, tonight, the Red Cross is asking for volunteers with medical experience, and they are in need of medical supplies. John? Byron Pitts just outside New Orleans tonight. Byron, thanks very much. Desperate as conditions still are for many victims in New Orleans, at least their misery is centered in a relatively confined and high-profile area. As Cynthia Bowers shows us tonight, that's definitely not the case for survivors scattered across the hurricane zone to the east. For five unimaginable days, many folks living along the Mississippi Gulf Coast have been wondering when or whether any kind of aid will get to them. The problem is there's still so many places you can't get to. And as the calls for help come in from these isolated communities, they're being answered from above. But on the ground, the help that comes isn't always what's needed most. And with communication so disrupted, that disconnect would continue for days to come. I'm not going to downgrade what they're doing because I know they're working hard. Folks in Kill, Mississippi told us they've been waiting here six hours for a relief truck, not a Black Hawk loaded with MREs. What did you need? Ice and water. Ice. A delivery of prepackaged food, though well intended, disappointed these third generation military families who say they can take care of themselves with the right kind of help. We got food. We can feed everybody. Right now, what we need is some gasoline so we can run our generators. The most pressing need for Tony Gilbert to get word yes, she's okay to her son serving in Iraq. I love you, Stevie. Emotions are easy to come by here. It's everything else that remains in short supply. Cynthia Bowers, CBS News, Gulfport, Mississippi. The misery Katrina has inflicted on Mississippi extends far beyond the Gulf Coast areas that were the storm's immediate target. Mark Strassman is in Hattiesburg tonight, where residents and newly arrived evacuees are scrambling to deal with the aftershocks. Even 90 miles inland, the frantic search for life's essentials is only marginally better. Food, water, ice, generators, and especially gasoline. Lines like this can be a mile long, but gas keeps their search alive for other necessities. In some cases, people wait for hours at a closed station, hoping it will open. Hotels are packed with evacuees for hundreds of miles. Many of them have no home to return to. And many people aren't just homeless, they're jobless too. Katrina wiped out thousands of businesses. So here's a sobering statistic for Labor Day on Monday. Along the Gulf Coast, the best guess is that the unemployment rate could soar to 25%. Katrina is a calamity that goes to the horizon and beyond. Mark Strassman, CBS News, Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Destruction and a human tragedy that is certainly going to last for years to come. Dahlia? John, a couple of questions. A public health official says at least uh, one morgue alone should expect up to 2,000 bodies. Does anyone know how many people have died? All they can do right now is, is, is guess, Thalia, because nobody has been out there to collect any of these dead bodies. As a matter of fact, at the convention center right behind me, there are at least a couple of dead bodies still there, one of them lying out in the middle of the street. And throughout the flooded areas, they're expecting that there could be well over a 1,000 casualties. We drove around in a boat the other day and uh, saw one just uh, floating beside a car. Uh, in fact, the emergency workers have been actually tying some of these bodies to trees by a wrist or to a stop sign just so that they don't float away so they know where to come back to them for. I mean, it's, it's incredibly incongruous, particularly in a city which puts such ceremony into funerals. There are also plenty of fires there, aren't there? There are almost every day something else sets ablaze. Yesterday, a chemical warehouse blew up. Uh, then later on in the day, there was a large fire at a small boutique downtown hotel. Today, Saks Fifth Avenue caught on fire. And they just don't have, even with all this water around them, the water to fight fires. Thalia? John Roberts, thank you very much. And still ahead on tonight's CBS Evening News, the latest on the evacuees taking refuge in Houston. So I put on this Thermacare heat wrap for knees. It heated up and it was all downhill from there. With less knee stiffness, less pain. Nice. Oh, and since the knee wrap can go anywhere I go, I'm gone.
And now, more of the 10 big reasons to shop Big Lots this week. Reason number 10, comforters for just $10 each. Reason number 2, four packs of Hanes Her Way Briefs, just $2 each. See all 10 amazing deals at Big Lots or BigLots.com. What's your deal today? Cholesterol comes from two sources. It's not only from that footlong Frank, but from your grandpa Frank. And not just from that Virginia ham, but from your Aunt Ginny, too. Your cholesterol doesn't just come from food. It also has a lot to do with family history. Ask your doctor about Vitorin. A healthy diet is important, but when it's not enough, adding Vitorin can help. Vitorin treats the two sources of cholesterol, food, and what your body makes naturally based on family history. Vitorin was proven in clinical studies to lower bad cholesterol more than Lipitor alone. Vitorin is not for everyone, including people with liver problems, women who are nursing, pregnant, or may become pregnant. Unexplained muscle pain or weakness could be a sign of a rare but serious side effect. Vitorin may interact with other medicines or certain foods, increasing your risk of getting this serious side effect. Simple blood tests are needed to check for liver problems. Follow a healthy diet and ask your doctor about adding Vitorin. For the two sources of cholesterol, remember the name Vitorin. That's Vitorin. We're for puppies. A wet nose, a warm belly, and a wagging tail. We're for playing, romping, gnawing, and nipping. For a cardboard box in the corner and a good long nap. We're for puppies. And we're for helping them grow up healthy and strong. Measles is a game you play and then you sing a song. Mumps are something that camels have. Some have two mumps and some have one. Chicken Park is a park where chickens have fun. Most kids today don't have a clue about diseases adults remember, thanks to Merck scientists. We've invested billions to research heart disease and asthma. Now we're trying to make Alzheimer's, diabetes, and cancer history, too. Merck, where patients come first. Every day, I see all kinds of people with diabetes. And for everyone, eating right and controlling weight is essential and hard to do. That's why there's delicious Glucerna to have as a meal or satisfying snack. Glucerna's unique blends of slowly digested carbs are clinically shown to help control blood sugar. And with a little exercise, Glucerna may help you lose weight. For free meal plans, visit glucerna.com. It's time for a taste of freedom. Of the hundreds of thousands of evacuees from the hurricane zone, most have gone to Texas. More than a quarter million have now reached Houston and other cities. More than half are being housed in shelters, and many are desperate to contact missing relatives. Trish Regan reports. These are my two stepkids. This is their grandmother, and this is their auntie. Oh. Leroy Armour has been searching the Houston Astrodome for two days, so far in vain. These are my stepkids. I've been raising them since then with him <laughs> and I would just want somebody to help me find Today, inside the dome, as we neared the message area for the missing, people came to us, one after another. I'm looking for my son, Arnold. I don't know where he is. Hoping to get their message out. I don't know if you're here. I can't find you. There are phones available to call loved ones, but too often, these calls end in disappointment. And nobody's not answering their phone. None of their phones is working. The Red Cross has established a website for hurricane victims that have checked into shelters. And computers are available at the shelter so people can try to find their families. The constant search is paying off for some. Tori McKenzie thought she had lost her six children and fiance. She was about to tell us her story when the good news came. He have yours, he have the cousins, he have everybody, man. And tonight, her family is on their way to join her in the Houston Astrodome. One of the other problems that many living here in the dome now face is that it's hard to find someone even if you know they are inside. One woman told me she had been looking for her mother for two straight days. This is despite the fact that she knew her mother was there. There was a record of it. As you can see, the facility itself is quite large. So you can imagine just the size of it combined with the number of people makes it very difficult. Baya? Absolutely. Trish Regan, thanks very much. 
and Americans are opening their hearts and wallets with unprecedented generosity to help the victims. They have already contributed at least $287 million, a record pace for private disaster relief. So far, more than $2,000 of that total comes from a group of children in New Jersey. The kids are selling lemonade and snacks to raise money, but they say lots of people just leave a donation and take nothing in return. Just ahead on tonight's CBS Evening News, trying to heal the psychological scars of Katrina's youngest victims. Cosmetic procedures? Why bother? For you, there's Olay Regenerist. Significant skin improvement. Women who use Regenerist may find they've lost interest in cosmetic procedures. Do you want some dessert? Not with my metabolism. Yeah, in your 30s, your metabolism slows. What can you do? You know what I do? I eat right, exercise, and I switch to One Day Weight Smart. It's a complete multivitamin with EGCG to help enhance metabolism. Every little bit helps. One Day Weight Smart. I was always going, having to go in the middle of traffic and just starting and stopping, having to go in the middle of a ball game and then not being able to go once I got there, and going at night, going and going. I thought I had a going problem. My doctor said I had a growing problem. It wasn't my bladder. My prostate was growing. I had an enlarging prostate. My doctor prescribed Avidart. Most medicines only treat symptoms. Avidart, with time, actually shrinks the prostate and improves urinary symptoms. So I can go more easily when I need to go and go less often. Only your doctor can tell if your symptoms are from an enlarged prostate and not a more serious condition such as prostate cancer. So have regular prostate exams. Avidart is for men only. Women should not take or handle Avidart due to the risk of a specific birth defect. Tell your doctor if you have liver disease. Rarely sexual side effects, tenderness, or swelling of the breast can occur. Call your doctor today. Avidart for your growing problem. If you have indoor or outdoor allergies, ask your doctor about something different, Singulair. While many allergy medicines block histamine, Singulair works differently by blocking leukotrienes, an underlying cause of allergy symptoms. And Singulair is now approved to help relieve both indoor and outdoor allergy symptoms for a full 24 hours. Side effects are generally mild and vary by age and may include headache, ear infection, sore throat, and upper respiratory infection. Singulair, a different way to treat indoor and outdoor allergies. Tears keep our eyes naturally moist. If you use over-the-counter drops several times a day, you may have chronic dry eye due to decreased tear production. Ask your eye doctor about Restasis. With continued use, Restasis helps increase your natural ability to produce tears, which may be suppressed by inflammation due to chronic dry eye. It should not be used by patients with active eye infections and has not been studied in patients with a history of herpes viral infections of the eye. The most common side effect is a burning sensation. I'm glad I asked my doctor. Thanks, Restasis. The devastation wrought by Hurricane Katrina are the people of New Orleans and the Gulf Coast getting all the help they need on Face the Nation with Bob Schieffer Sunday. There have been countless vivid tales of survival in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. One of the most harrowing is told by jazz singer Charmaine Neville of the legendary New Orleans musical family. She spent days clinging to her rooftop waiting for help. We were watching the helicopters go across the bridge and airlift other people out, but they would hover over us and tell us, hi, and that would be all. They wouldn't drop us any food, any water, or nothing. Alligators were eating people. They had all kinds of stuff in the water. They had babies floating in the water. We had to walk over hundreds of bodies of dead people. The trauma experienced by Charmaine Neville and countless other victims may haunt them for years. Past disasters like the tsunami show that the most innocent of all, the children, suffer the most. Here's Sandra Hughes. When the tsunami hit Southeast Asia last December, the Firmage family of Mill Valley, California, was almost swallowed up by the wall of water. Everyone started running and screaming, and a woman pointed to my sister and said, run, and we all started running. When they arrived home eight months ago, they were grateful for their lives and their home. But they quickly learned the healing process was just beginning. There were nightmares. Tsunami dreams. Sometimes there were warnings, sometimes there weren't. 
11-year-old Caitlin decided she needed to write about it and did so for a children's paper. I'll always remember my screaming for my mom and how my voice sounded. Now, Hurricane Katrina has brought back those painful memories. Michaela started to, to not want to hear it, and it's, she started to have flashbacks. Dozens of mental health experts have been dispatched to the hurricane zone to help the thousands of victims deal with the long-term emotional trauma of losing everything they know. Hardest hit, the children who've been displaced from their schools, their homes, their families. You may see bedwetting, thumb sucking, uh, clinging behavior. And in some cases, complete breakdowns. This is my dad's job. <laughs> Shell-shocked parents. I don't know what's going to happen to me and my family. May not realize what impact losing control in front of their children has on little ones. If the parents are out of control, you can expect the children to be out of control. The experts say the littlest victims of this disaster need to talk, draw, and be allowed to express with teachers and family all that they've endured. And only then will the real healing begin. Sandra Hughes, CBS News, Los Angeles. At 6'4", 220 pounds, Bob's a formidable man. But he was no match for something less than one millionth his size. It KO'd Bob so fast, he didn't know what hit him. It was a clot. Like Bob, if you've been hospitalized with heart-related chest pain or a certain type of heart attack, what doctors call ACS, chances are you've had a clot. But now, Bob's doctor is helping increase Bob's protection against heart attack and stroke by putting Bob on Plavix. Plavix, in combination with aspirin and other heart medicines, helps provide greater protection against heart attack and stroke than aspirin and other heart medicines alone by helping keep blood platelets from sticking together and forming clots. If you have a stomach ulcer or other condition that causes bleeding, you shouldn't use Plavix. When taking Plavix alone or with some medicines, including aspirin, the risk of bleeding may increase. To minimize this risk, talk to your doctor before taking aspirin or other medicines with Plavix. Additional rare but serious side effects could occur. Ask your doctor about Plavix today because no matter how formidable you are, you're no match for a dangerous clot. There will be some discomfort, but it won't hurt a bit. Now with new Olay Regenerist Night, you can rest easy. It works during the night to increase surface cell renewal by 50% for an Olay Mini Lift every morning. Got gas? Pressure? Bloating? Tums doesn't treat gas. To treat gas, use Gas X for fast, powerful relief. Oh. Popcorn? Ooh. Gas X beats the bloat, and acids don't. How Hank tricked the hound by Shaw. Hank chose sure unscented. Stanley applied a macho smell. There they go. Ooh, Rex has picked up a scent, but only Stanley's, because Hank seems undetectable. Good plan, Hank. Odor-free, sure unscented. Protection that's undetected. The human body was designed to move, so now Serenity gently hugs your body for a closer fit than the leading protective underwear. New Serenity Discreet Activewear. You move, they move. You're protected. Serenity from Tenna. Sadly, arthritis pain can mean the end of life's little pleasures. But not for people who use Aleve. People whose doctors have told them the good news about the strength and safety of Aleve. The good news that only Aleve can stop arthritis pain all day with just two pills. That would take eight Tylenol. Take back the pleasure arthritis pain took away. Ask your doctor about the good news. Ask your doctor about Aleve. Counting the cost. Starting Monday, the long-term effects on daily life and the economy. Coverage continues on the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. Experience you can trust. An update now on the situation in New Orleans and the Gulf Coast. The massive evacuation and relief efforts appear to be picking up momentum. More National Guard troops are arriving and helicopters are transporting evacuees to the New Orleans airport where they will be taken on to shelters. But hundreds at the airport are still in need of medical treatment. As many as 10 people a day are reportedly dying there. This has, of course, been an extraordinary week, the likes of which this country has never seen, filled with heart-wrenching images and haunting moments we will never forget. It's, it's absolutely undescribable here. It's just there's nothing left. We pray that the loss of life is very limited, but we're fearful that is not the case. Everything gone. Everything wiped out is gone. It's one of those disasters I think you could 
really only say it's uh, biblical proportions. Trying to get the attention of rescuers. There are folks who live in New Orleans who will not be able to get back to their homes for months, if not forever. Help us, man. New Orleans tonight is a city that's sinking deeper into chaos. They don't have no formula, no water, and they, and they want us to survive out here. Where's FEMA? Where's the mail? It's too hard. Don't treat us like dogs. Don't treat us like dogs. This is amazing. This is America. <laughs> you hear about this in foreign countries, not here. We cannot allow it to be said by history that the difference between those who lived and those who died was nothing more than poverty, age, or skin color. When I saw the National Guard that arrived today, I felt like once again I was a part of America. Because I really felt like my country had deserted me until then. I know that those of you who have been hit hard by Katrina are suffering. Many are angry and desperate for help. The tasks before us are enormous, but so is the heart of America. We will restore the towns and neighborhoods that have been lost in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. We'll rebuild the great city of New Orleans. And we'll once again show the world that the worst adversities bring out the best in America. And that's the CBS Evening News. Later tonight, 48 hours. And there will be updates on Katrina tomorrow on Sunday morning and Face the Nation and on CBSNews.com. I'm Thalia Shuras, CBS News in New York. Good night, everyone. For news 24 hours a day, click on cbsnews.com. Brought to you in part by Walmart. Bringing your community jobs, low prices, and support for neighborhood programs. News. County Line Lexus makes the Lexus Golden Opportunity Sales event even more golden. Right now, lease a fabulous new RX or ES330 loaded with leather, CD, and sunroof for only $3.99 per month. $3.99 for only 36 months. Take advantage of huge Lexus Golden Opportunity Savings, plus sign and drive on every new Lexus with absolutely no money down and no money out of pocket during the Lexus Golden Opportunity Sales event going on right now at County Line Lexus, home of the Lexus Way. We want everybody to hate playing our team. We're going to be so physical, dominant, relentless in our effort. We want the other team to hate playing us. Now's the time to say, this is my seat. Announcing the Dolphins' fantastic four-game plans. The Broncos, Panthers, and sold-out Patriots and Jets. Four big games, one low price, $180. Dolphins football at Dolphin Stadium. Call 1-888-FINSTICKS or MiamiDolphins.com. Our crews are live on the Gulf Coast after Katrina. For continuing coverage, keep it on four. Hurricane Katrina, a disaster that shocked the world. The American city of New Orleans essentially destroyed. Much of the Gulf Coast turned into matchsticks. Wind so strong, buildings didn't have a chance. A storm surge so powerful that nothing near the water and up to a mile inland survived. And a tragedy so great that a major American city is left in chaos. No power, no drinkable water, and no place that's safe as anarchy reigns in the street and buildings burn in the middle of a flood of biblical proportions. Across the Gulf Coast, hundreds of thousands of people are homeless, jobless, and desperate. Tonight, we'll show you the effects of Katrina from South Florida to the Gulf Coast and how you can help. Now, live from CBS4, a special edition of Hurricane 2005 in the path of Katrina. Hello, I'm Brian Norcross. We'll take a look back at Hurricane Katrina, how it happened, how it went so terribly wrong, and how we can all help. We have a team of reporters from the Storm Zone to South Florida reporting on the tragedy there and the support growing here for the hurricane victims. And a lot of good hurricane help is coming our way from CBS4's Neighbors for Neighbors. Maggie Rodriguez is back from maternity leave to be part of the massive effort, and she's with us now in the Neighbors for Neighbors phone bag. Maggie, welcome back on uh, an unfortunate occasion. 
Thank you very much, Brian. It's good to be back. Uh, unfortunate, as you said, but I just, for one, felt like I needed to be here. Having a baby at home, a baby who was cranky and crying just because we didn't have power for a few days, and then seeing those families in the Gulf with babies they can't even feed, I mean, how can you not do something? I think everyone has felt this overwhelming need to do something, and that's where, once again, Neighbors for Neighbors has proven to be an invaluable lifeline. We have received so many incredible donations. I want to share some of them with you. This morning, we loaded a big old semi-truck filled with supplies, and we'll show you the video, in Pembroke Pines. And this is basically a mobile medical unit that we're sending out to Mississippi. Picayune has a hospital, Crosby Memorial, and it services 9,000 residents in that town. Right now, they have no power. They don't have a roof. They don't have supplies. So we're sending them along with medical personnel. Get this, a 747 was donated to us by, uh, we want to give uh, a big thank you to Mario Abad and his company, Charter America Incorporated. This plane, they let us use it. They paid for the pilot. They play, paid for the fuel. And Stop Hunger, the organization Stop Hunger, paid for the supplies that we'll be taking to the Gulf Coast as well. We took off early this morning. And yesterday, the Kai's company, the CEO, Michael Pappas, presented a check for $32,000 to Neighbors for Neighbors. And that donation is intended to jumpstart a fundraising drive to pay for fuel costs, because as you can imagine, it costs a lot of money and fuel to transport these relief goods all the way up across the state of Florida. We're lucky enough to have a plane, but we also have a lot of trucks that are headed there to take care of the immediate need. Here at home, right here in the city of Doral, we had some very special children who wanted to help, and they're here with me right now. Come on in, Michelle. This is Michelle Hart and her friends. Come on in, guys. They had a bake sale today. Here's the money they raised. How much did you raise? $812.05. $812.05. And they have come over to donate all of their earnings to Neighbors for Neighbors. They baked cookies, and this is how they made money to help the people out there in the Gulf. Why did you decide to do this? Well, we just couldn't believe what we were seeing, what we were watching on the TV, and just, it's sad. So we wanted to help, and the only way we could help was to bake, so we had a bake sale. It was a great way to help. Thank you so much, and we'll be sure to, to use that, put that to good use. In fact, we want to tell you that we're going to tell you exactly where your money is going when you give to Neighbors for Neighbors. That's coming up in just a few minutes. Right now, we'll send it back to you, Brian. All right, Maggie, we'll check back with you. I know you have some celebrities there as well, answering the phones for people to call in. And now, on to New Orleans. CBS 4's Brian Andrews has been there throughout it all, the wind, the water, and the unimaginable human suffering. He's live in suburban Kenner, Louisiana now to bring us up to date on what's going on there today, Brian? Brian, words cannot express just how bad it really is. The lives that have been destroyed, the lives that have been taken, the lives that have been changed forever. We were down in New Orleans today and we actually helped a lady get out. She had to make a tough decision. She had a dog that she's had for five years. It's her only companion. And if she was going to get on a helicopter or a bus, she'd have to leave her dog behind. We felt terrible for her, so we said, hey, jump on our CBS News car. We'll give you a ride to Kenner. And tonight, she and her dog are now going to be with her son in Houston. That's just an example as to the tough decisions that are being made. Uh, also, just the grim reality of the fact that downtown is dirty. It is a health hazard. Uh, it is dangerous as there are nails and broken glass everywhere. But New Orleans is a tough town, and they're vowing to rebuild. We saw bodies under blankets and bodies near trash already in body bags. The survivors from this storm living in filth on the streets of New Orleans. Whatever they brought with them now trashed and strewn all over the downtown area. We're outside the Louisiana Superdome where uh, hundreds are still waiting for a bus ride out of here, out of this bad situation. Uh, the buses, though, uh, having a little difficulty navigating around these floodwaters. We're told by National Guard troops that they saw bodies floating in these floodwaters earlier in the day. Uh, let me show you what's happening right now. We've got a family here behind us, and uh, they appear to be reading children's books. All over the tablecloth. Goldilocks slide. Side. They're reading Goldilocks <laughs> and the Three Bears, <laughs> trying to make the best of a bad situation. Yes, yes, Where are y'all from? From Algiers. From Algiers? Yes, sir. These are your kids? Yes, this is my girls. If you had one message to tell the people out there about what your life's been like in the last couple of days, what would you like people to know? We was, it was rough, but we made it. And I was just telling them, keep the faith. 
put God first and keep on pushing. That's all I can tell you. I'm crying, but I'm all right. I'm not hungry or anything. Don't worry, God is going to take care of me. I'm here at the Superdome. And my son, Brian, if you're still in Texas, that's where I'm headed at. And uh, I want to talk with you when I get there. Military Humvees making their way through the flooded streets of the downtown area. National Guard troops standing guard on street corners. Giant helicopters hovering overhead. Troops unfurling a big American flag at the entrance to the mall next to the Superdome, where hundreds of people were sitting outside. On the other end of downtown, the Great American Rescue. Dozens of helicopters airlifting the thousands stranded in this area. You must be so happy to be getting out of here. Yeah. Yes, I am. It's been up there seven days. Where are you from? We're from New Orleans in the 17th on the Holly Grove. You must be so happy to be getting out of here. So happy. We thank the Lord. We're very happy. And I want to tell my family we are and tonight downtown new orleans is beginning to empty out all of those people getting to a place where they can take a shower use the restroom have a hot meal pick up a telephone or a cell phone and call someone they love and say hey i made it through this one back to you brian all right brian you see the troops we see the helicopters it all looks good. Is it enough? I mean, there's thousands of people still left in that city. Uh, are there still people there suffering? Well, where does it stand, you know, behind the obvious pictures? Well, behind the obvious picture, a lot of people are angry. There is a tremendous amount of frustration with the federal government. Why did we have to wait so long for the cavalry to come in? Why was it just today that we saw hundreds of helicopter flights in and out of New Orleans and buses making their way in? Uh, there are a lot of people in New Orleans who want answers. The mayor was extremely aggravated and extremely critical of the president before he came to town. And then yesterday when the TV cameras were turned on, the two were smiling and glad handing each other as the president was getting on Marine One. But behind all those pretty pictures, there is some seething anger as to way the White House, the federal government and the Pentagon was apparently extremely slow in getting the military into downtown to help these people not only get out, but to bring them relief. Brian, New Orleans is a big place. It's a pretty good sized city. Are there not still people east of town there in that area where the flooding goes up to the roofs that may likely still be inside those houses that can't cut a hole in the roof? I mean, isn't that uh, what we're hearing? Yeah, absolutely, Brian. I mean, even at this late hour, the, uh, the round the clock rescue missions continue by helicopter and by boat. There, there have been at least 5,000 rescues uh, from the different parishes just over the last couple of days as they've been getting people out of those saturated homes and to dry ground. The convention center we heard so much about, is that now cleared out? There was a scene of lawlessness and all sort of horrible activities. Uh, what's going on there? Well, Brian, to talk best about the convention center, let me bring in my colleague, Storm Specialist David Bernard. I mean, we were down there today. I remember going in there, just walking in, and yeah. the stench, the urine, the feces, Terrible. the trash. Uh, the people who were sitting out on the curbs just because they didn't want to be in that filth anymore. And then in the street, the dead bodies. It was just unreal. It wasn't anything you would wish on a human, much less an animal or anything else. It was just intolerable. I I've never I've never seen or smelled anything like it. Now, you, you had a chance to go back into a neighborhood today that you love so much, one that's yes. very dear to your heart. That's true. And, you know, this whole week I've just been, I, I mean, I can't even talk about the literally hundreds of people that I know that have had their homes, their businesses, their livelihoods wiped out. And one place in particular that I spent the most time while I was in New Orleans was in the French Quarter, and I was determined to go there. I went today, and believe it or not, some diehards were still there, including a few people I knew personally. In true New Orleans fashion, it didn't take long to find friends. I left about six weeks ago, baby. You didn't because even know? Because the last I seen to you was in there getting coffee. That's right, every morning. Every morning, I, know. I say I love you I and Diane well. Miss Viola Madeer was a familiar face in and around the coffee shop. She's okay, but needs to reunite with family. I lost my van. I lost my 10 grandbabies because I don't know where they at. I want Felicia, Nicole, Vanessa, and Lisa to call me at 524-3525. 
I am at the hotel where I work at. My old friend, Mr. Jacques, stubborn as ever, stayed for the storm. He's lived here since 1963. But, uh, I mean, everything is gone. I'm here. And uh, at night, it's simple, <clears throat> too, uh, too, too warm, you know. I leave my door open. Can New Orleans come back? I hope so. One thing for sure, New Orleanians will always do it their own way. There's no other place in the world like New Orleans, no matter where you go. This is, this is it. And then those who want to tear it down, you know what? Tear your own city down, leave always alone. Brian, that's the kind of spirit that I learned in my eight years here in New Orleans from uh, that last gentleman. Uh, the lady, Miss Viola, who I used to see uh, in and around the coffee shop I went to every day, I hooked her up with a local radio station here. Uh, they have a system now where people are calling in saying this person's in this location. The federal government is monitoring the radio, and uh, hopefully this afternoon they sent some people down to the French Quarter to find them. They were in good shape. They just didn't have a means of getting out of the city to connect with their relatives out in the suburbs. David, how does the French Quarter look? Is, is, has the French Quarter survived this? That is the big story here, I think, as far as infrastructure goes for the city. That is the heart and soul of this city. That's the economic center of the city. The French Quarter looked fantastic to me today. Um, again, there was very little water, only in the lower part of the quarter, close to Canal Street, but not enough to do damage. There's trees down, and there's superficial damage to a few buildings. And also, uh, the looting did not look prevalent in the quarter. I went up and down where a lot of the shops were. Obvious things like the A.M.P. food store, yes, those were looted, uh, but in general, it did not look like there was a severe amount of looting or uh, damage done by that, and so that's that's really good news, because if there's hope of uh, building this place back, they're going to need the historic French Quarter. And how about the Central Business District uh, down there by the casino, by the big hotels where the tourists would go, if they can bring the city back and turn it into a tourist mecca again? Uh, that's a different story. The hotels, most of them have suffered severe damage. It's going to take some time to repair a lot of these buildings. And uh, there was deeper water in parts of Poydras Street, which is where a lot of those hotels are. The casino itself uh, does look like it's in pretty good condition, at least from the outside, from what I was able to tell. All right. David Bernard and Brian Andrews in the New Orleans area today. Thank you very much, and thank you for your work there. Now, we talk a lot about New Orleans because of the concentration of people there and the unbelievable suffering going on. But the misery continues in Mississippi as well. CBS 4's Juwan Strader is here now with more on the slow and painful recovery from Katrina. Juwan? Yes, Brian, and you take a look here right behind me. The pictures say it all. Folks in Mississippi are finding it difficult to move forward from the storm that took away so much from so many. Biloxi today is a city filled with lines of lost souls. We have no water, no light, no gas, no nothing. The well was destroyed and the sheds are gone and the roof's leaked. Five days after Hurricane Katrina obliterated this coastal city, Tom Taylor is still trying to get a message to his family. The house is gone. We have nothing left. If you can hear, if you see this, stay where you're at because there ain't nothing down here. We'll get out when we can. The lines of hope are opening up at restaurants like this one, where Carolyn Law is getting her first hot meal since Katrina stole her appetite. It's going to make me sick eating because I'm going to gobble it down so fast. <laughs> Precious few filling stations have gasoline. Liquid gold going in there? <laughs> For now, yeah. And where there's gas, there are lines. Long, long lines. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. How long you been here? I've been here since 6 o'clock. People rude. They, they cut in front of you and stuff. Don't, nobody's got respect for nobody. The Walmart is open again. For many, what's in these baskets is just about all they have. We got clothes and food. <laughs> we lost everything. Lost everything. It's something you hear down here a lot. But a few bags of hope is that first step toward what will be a long road to recovery. Now, the Red Cross says that more than 94,000 storm victims across the region are in dozens of its shelters in nine states. Brian? All right, Juwan, thanks very much. 
For more now on how you can help the victims of Hurricane Katrina, let's go back to the Neighbors for Neighbors phone bank and Maggie Rodriguez. Maggie. Brian, it's very simple. All you have to do is call Neighbors for Neighbors, and lots of you are doing it. We'd like to thank you very much. The numbers are at the bottom of your screen, 305-597-4404 or toll-free, 877-411-4242. This is what we like to hear, and here's how it works. You can donate with a check. You can send us a check. We'll give you the address. You can give us your credit card number, or if you would rather not, give us your credit card number. You can always go to our website and donate there via a secure line. We want you to know how Neighbors works. We like to give money for long-term recovery. Long after the checks start coming and the media stops doing stories on this, there will still be a great need in the Gulf Coast. And so we give to organizations that help in that long-term recovery, and we list all those organizations on our website, NeighborsForNeighbors.org. So please call us. We need your help. We want to show you some of the South Florida personalities who are here to help in the effort. If you go over there, all the way at the end, the lady in the black, that's Kimba from Light 101.5. Next to her is our very own Elliot Rodriguez, who's taking your calls this afternoon. And then Donna Davis is here from Magic 102.7, as well as Rick Shaw. Oh, no, I blew it. That's Joe Johnson. And now I was going to have you guess who this is, but uh, I guess I revealed it. Oh, you gave it away. Okay, how about Magic 102.7? Hey, how you doing? What's going on? Huh? Unmistakable Rick Shaw here with us and they had their own telethon right on the air this we weekend did. we did we yesterday and we raised over two hundred thousand dollars wow. it was amazing I, I'm telling you this community is just phenomenal when you when there is a need yeah. like this we we are taking the front end you guys are taking care of the back end down the road when ours runs out yours kicks in so we're trying to cover both bases at the same time so it's it's, it's wonderful we thank you we love you you know that together we will do this we will take care of the people as much as we can out there who need it so much we'll uh, come back and, and tell you about some of the other donations we're receiving here in just a few minutes. Brian. All right, Maggie, we'll check with you then. Still ahead, the aftermath of Katrina is just too much to handle for some of the men and women who are there to restore order out of the chaos. I'm Mike Kurtz, live outside of uh, Louisiana here, outside of the city, where a demoralized police force here has learned that two of its police officers have committed suicide. That story coming up in the second half hour. All right, Mike, we'll see you then. Also ahead, I'll take a look back at Katrina's path across South Florida and onto the Gulf Coast. And I'll give you thinking on why New Orleans suffered such a severe, uh, severe flooding. It's not what you might think. And National Hurricane Center Director Max Mayfield will also share his thoughts on Hurricane Katrina as he's just returned from the Gulf Coast. <laughs> and I've already lost my daughter now. I don't know where my sons are or how they're faring. And unbelievable stories of heartbreak in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. All that's still ahead on Hurricane 2005 in the path of Katrina. Hurricane 2005 on CBS4 is sponsored in part by Winn-Dixie, by Bank Atlantic, and by South Florida Water Management District. Chevy's proud to be the number one selling passenger car brand in America. We have nine cars with at least 30 highway miles per gallon. We've always broken the rules. Now we're rewriting them with the Chevy employee discount for everyone. You pay what we pay, not a cent more. We're continuing the Chevy employee discount for everyone. Get employee pricing on almost every 05 Chevy vehicle. See your Southern Chevy dealers. For a good, good Hurricane season is now through November 30th. Are you and your family prepared for a hurricane or tropical storm? Ready yourself by mapping out a safety plan, being familiar with evacuation routes, and updating your hurricane preparedness kits with items from Winn-Dixie. While you're in the store, pick up our hurricane preparedness brochure for a checklist of must-have items for your kit. From batteries to bottled water, you'll find everything you need to stay prepared at your neighborhood Winn-Dixie. Are you tired of having your garage look like this? Hi, I'm Michael Dagan. I'm the owner of Household Garages. The hurricane scene is upon us. If a storm ever threatens, let us show you how we can get that extra space in the garage that you'll need. House Wall South Florida's leading garage organization professionals, offering six different colors and over 50 accessories. So if a storm does threaten, give yourself that added space you need to bring in your outside furniture and get your car back into the garage. Call 866-345-WALL to schedule a free estimate or check us out at housewall.com. To hook, hold, or hide with House Wall Garage System. Bank Atlantic has been your neighbor for more than 50 years. Like you, we've seen our share of hurricanes. Last year alone, 
our community was seriously impacted by the storms. To ensure you and your families are well prepared, every Friday all 76 of our branches are giving away free hurricane supplies. If a storm strikes, Bank Atlantic branches will offer mobile phone charging, free water, and will collect donations for local hurricane relief. We're open seven days a week. If a storm hits, you can depend on Bank Atlantic. Hurricane 2005 on CBS4 is sponsored in part by Eldorado Furniture, by Hearst Hurricane Shutters, by Personalized Power Systems, and by House Wall Garage System. And welcome back. We haven't had this experience here in South Florida in memory. A storm that formed over the Bahamas and hit us as a full hurricane. So let's go back to the beginning when TD12 formed. There it was, it was August 23rd and it formed over the Bahamas and began a slow move to the northwest. Upgraded tropical storm Katrina on the 24th, 8 a.m. in the morning, and then moving north and moving left toward the west, toward South Florida, just offshore of Broward County. Katrina is upgraded to a hurricane 3.30 in the afternoon of the 25th. Then the storm actually gets stronger in that little bit of distance to the shore, coming ashore in the afternoon so that by 7 p.m. when we were uh, getting the worst of it uh, in South Florida, here are the gusts, the highest gusts recorded. You see 97 miles per hour over here in uh, Homestead, 92 at Port Everglades, 87 at Sweetwater, 82 Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood, 78 at the Miami International Airport, and 76 at Key West. So hurricane force winds with some even barely category two gusts, but a solid category one hurricane over South Florida. And then it moves to the Southwest, uh, just north of the Keys, and of course pounds uh, the lower Keys with heavy rain and flooding, and then begins the move to the north. Upgraded to a category five hurricane, 8 a.m. on the 28th. At that time, the Gulf Coast was uh, being evacuated, at least the evacuations were starting, and great fear was developing for the New Orleans metropolitan area. The storm continued to the north, and right even with New Orleans, you can see the unbalance. The uh, red area there is bigger to the right because it was a stronger storm in Biloxi on the right side than it was in New Orleans on the left side, and that's what saved the French Quarter. They only had winds there at about 100 miles per hour, and then, of course, it just speeded to the north and weakened. Now, National Hurricane Center Director Max Mayfield led the team that tracked and forecasted the path of Katrina across South Florida and the Gulf. A forecast that, by the way, was significantly more accurate than average. Max knew it would be bad, but even he was stunned when he saw the devastation firsthand. CBS4's Jason Wheeler has the story. This is uh, where the dots are close. As forecasters forecast. followed Katrina, and then this is the actual track. They knew early on. 11 p.m. on uh, Saturday, the 27th. Where she was headed and what she was capable of doing. How about one word? A catastrophe. But even their impressive radar and satellite images pale in comparison to these images of Katrina. We know what a hurricane is, is all about. Uh, but when you see the, the aerial extent of this, you know, from the south central Louisiana coast, you know, all the way through the northern area, the entire Mississippi coast, the whole coast, uh, it's just uh, really, really hard to, uh, to believe that it was over that large of an area. After seeing the strongest of storms, with Andrew and uh, uh, Fran, and all of their damage for the past 33 years now, Hurricane Center Director Max Mayfield has spent the past few days flying in stunned silence over Katrina's demolition zone. I've never took my eyes uh, from looking out the window. It is by far, he exclaims, the worst he has ever witnessed. There are no landmarks left. We knew, you know, what cities were flying over, but uh, the, you know, every now and then you'd see a lighthouse or see a shopping center that you recognize, but uh, uh, few and far between. He knew it would be bad, but not this bad. Still, it could have been even worse if so many people had not evacuated. They did so in large part because of the warnings issued by Mayfield and his crew. Their forecast was almost perfect, well in advance of landfall. They'd normally be proud to tout that kind of thing. Now just isn't a good time, though. I don't want uh, the folks there in Louisiana, Mississippi, or Alabama to think we're taking any uh, any joy in uh, having a good forecast on this. You know, we're all having a hard time letting go of this, given the large uh, loss of life here. 
Mayfield says that if anything good can come from Katrina, it is that it will show the rest of us, especially those of us living in coastal areas, exactly what a hurricane can do and that maybe that will make us all more prepared when the next one comes, and it will. In West Miami-Dade, Jason Wheeler, CBS 4 News. Now, even though the hurricane warning was up from Vero Beach South, few people expected significant damage from Katrina here, and they certainly were surprised that the worst was in Miami-Dade County. What many thought would be simply a wet inconvenience for South Florida turned out to be a whole lot more. Here's CBS 4's Art Barron. This time, Mother Nature sneaked up on South Florida. Disguised as a tropical storm, no one considered Katrina a real threat until after she made landfall as a Category 1 hurricane, bringing with her powerful winds and heavy rains. We'll just have to watch very, very closely. A hurricane center is not certain, and that's why there's this broad band all the way from Vero Beach down to South Dade with the possibility of hurricane force winds. While forecasters and city officials prepared for the worst, everyone in the area from Vero Beach down to Florida City should expect hurricane conditions and take action for the possibility of a hurricane occurring. It's anticipated that Tropical Storm Katrina will be primarily a wet storm meaning we can expect a lot of rain for a couple of days. Many residents in South Florida didn't appear too concerned. I'm not quite worried yet. I'll, I'll give it a, a 24 more hours and see what happens. It seemed only a handful of people were out gathering hurricane supplies, leaving usually packed home depots and grocery stores fully stocked. The slow-moving storm's biggest threat expected to be nothing more than heavy rains and possible flooding. But as Katrina inched closer, the situation changed. Uh, as I speak here, to go ahead and upgrade it to a Category 1 hurricane. And some of the stronger winds are indeed to the south of the center, which is a little surprising. With Katrina now a Category 1 hurricane, conditions deteriorated quickly. As Katrina closed in on South Florida, heavy rain and strong winds paralyzed residents more prepared for a tropical storm than a hurricane. Even the music world was taking a hit. The VMAs scheduled to take place on Sunday in downtown Miami were caught off guard. Scrambling to take cover, the moon man was brought down from his throne. Katrina hit land between Hollandale Beach and North Miami Beach, with gusts reaching close to 100 miles an hour. Once again, South Florida was victim to another natural disaster. There is tremendous damage at Crandon Marina, and I'm talking about our boat survived Andrew with just a little scratch. Our boat is not surviving this storm. We've been having some real bad squalls and um, uh, real bad lightning, and it's starting to get flooded here. I Katrina's wrath was felt in downed trees and power outages. Its force so unforgiving, it knocked down an overpass on the 836 and flooded entire areas. The next morning, the mood was glum. And I went to sleep yesterday night and I woke up with all this mess going on. One and a half million people left in the dark. Aerial views showed neighborhoods under several inches of water, with some residents forced to find alternate forms of transportation. Strong winds knocked electrical lines to the ground, shutting down schools left without power for several days. In the Keys, residents caught by surprise when Katrina took an unexpected turn to the south. It sounded like two cars collided and smashed together. There was a sound that was just, uh, that I've never heard. South Florida eerily reminded of Hurricane Andrew and just how dangerous any storm can be. All right, Art, thanks very much. Hurricane Katrina left many in South Florida without electricity, as you know, and amazingly, some people are still in the dark. Right now, FBNL says that 11,600 residents are without power in Miami, Dade, and Broward combined. Ironically, the number of outages had been 5,000 earlier in the day, but the numbers increased. For some reason, though, we don't know. Now, without help from the federal government, some folks here in South Florida are going to need help of their neighbors. So let's go back to Maggie Rodriguez. She's in the Neighbors for Neighbors phone bank now with more on the ways that you can help. Maggie? Brian, those people need our help, and they are getting it. I'm holding in my, in my hand $4,500 worth of credit card donations alone that we have received just since we've been on the air. Thank you very much. Uh, a couple of names to thank. Deborah Anslow, $100. Amanda Mahler, $100. Uh, Rose Griffith.
she gave us a hundred dollars we also got a call from Belle Zader she's 90 years old and she told our Elliot Rodriguez who's answering phones she said you probably won't want to accept this because it's so little but I'd like to give $25 of course we accept it Belle and we thank you very much we'd like to thank the Church of God Ministries who donated $200 and Oceania 3 condo located in Sunny Isles Beach called and said that they had gathered just in their condo $5,000 and could we send someone to pick it up absolutely we are on the way this is what neighbors for neighbors is for this is when where we spring into action and it's our pleasure to do it Lynn Cameron founded neighbors for neighbors back in 1992 after Hurricane Andrew and of course she is here and Lynn when people donate how, how does it work tell me exactly the process well when people donate we of course we have to wait for those checks to clear and for you to get your credit card statements but what we're going to be doing in this case particularly is working with organizations that are involved in long-term recovery we know that these people's lives need to be put back together. We know that that's going to take a long time. And way after the rest of us have stopped sending checks, they're going to need us. So we will be giving money to organizations. Those organizations will be listed on our website. Okay. They will be linked on our website so that you will be able to track how those organizations are using your donation to help those victims or those survivors in the Gulf Coast. Thank you very much, Lynn. And we'll be back in just a little bit to give you more information. Keep those phones ringing, the numbers you can see on our screen. Live in the Neighbors Phone Bank, Maggie Rodriguez. Back to you, Brian. All right, Maggie. We'll check back with you soon. Now there's more coming up on Hurricane 2005, the path of Katrina. My dad's Even job. Bewildered and lost in the aftermath of the hurricane. You'll hear their stories and more from the storm zone. And also ahead, there are men and women working to bring peace back to New Orleans. But the situation is too much for some of them to handle. I'm Mike Kirsch, live outside of New Orleans, where two New Orleans police officers have committed suicide in the last 24 hours. That story coming up in the second half hour. Thanks, Mike. We'll see you then. And dozens of evacuees are coming to South Florida from New Orleans. We're there as they share their harrowing stories. Those stories and more are coming up on Hurricane 2005 in the path of Katrina. What's going on right now inside the strike zone? CBS 4 News is all over the Gulf Coast with Brian Andrews, the only local TV reporter there since the beginning. Meteorologist David Bernard, a former New Orleans resident bringing you his unique perspective. And Mike Kirsch, a reporter who's covered some of the world's most dangerous stories. Crisis and chaos after Katrina. For the most complete team coverage, keep it on CBS 4 News. Before you leave on your vacation this summer, take a look at your auto insurance. Are you certain that you're getting the best price? You should know Mercury Insurance consistently beats its competitors in head-to-head -head rate comparisons. Florida drivers can save over $500 a year. So whatever road you take this summer, take Mercury along. Mercury Insurance, going the extra mile for you. For a fast free quote, call 888-4-MERCURY. I'm Larry Coulter of the Miami Hurricanes. Unfortunately, another hurricane season is rapidly approaching, so we need to be prepared. Hearst Shutter Company is the nation's oldest and largest hurricane shutter manufacturer and has been family owned since 1957. Hearst produces all of its hurricane products right here in their modern 60,000 square foot factory. Ask for Hearst products by name and use only licensed and insured companies and contractors. So take it from someone who knows a thing or two about hurricanes. Choose Hearst first. Bank Atlantic has been your neighbor for more than 50 years. Like you, we've seen our share of hurricanes. Last year alone, our community was seriously impacted by the storms. To ensure you and your families are well prepared, every Friday, all 76 of our branches are giving away free hurricane supplies. If a storm strikes, Bank Atlantic branches will offer mobile phone charging, free water, and will collect donations for local hurricane relief. We're open seven days a week. If a storm hits, you can depend on Bank Atlantic. Bank Atlantic, official sponsor of CBS4's Hurricane Preparedness Campaign. Bank Atlantic, Florida's most convenient bank. Open seven days a week. And welcome back. So why did New Orleans flood so badly? Was Katrina simply too strong a storm for the levee system there to withstand? Well, despite what you've heard, the answer may be no. 
Let's start by looking at the situation there in New Orleans. Now, here's the map that I know you've seen. There is the city of New Orleans there, Lake Pontchartrain, a huge lake to the north, Lake Bourne to the east, and this is essentially water down to the south that connects there to the Gulf of Mexico. It is an island city surrounded by water. The close-up shot of the city shows you this red line. This red line is a massive levee system that's been built and designed, the current one, since 1965 when Hurricane Betsy came came in there and uh, produced a tremendous flood, especially in the eastern part of the city. So the levee was put in to withstand, according to the specifications, a fast-moving Category 3 hurricane. Well, you might say, well, wasn't this Category 4? Well, not so fast. Now, the cross-section of the city looks like this. It is, as you've heard, a bowl. Here's Lake Pontchartrain over on this side, and there's the levee right there on the Lake Pontchartrain side. Here's the Mississippi River, and there is the levee on that side. So the lowest part of the city is over here on the lake side, and it's about 9, 10 feet below sea level over there, and then it rises up to be actually above sea level slightly over on the uh, far uh, southern side of the city by Lake uh, the uh, Mississippi River. Now, here's the track of the storm. So what happened? As the storm was to the south, it was pushing water from Lake Bourne over here toward the city. And then it moved to the, the storm moved to the north, and so the north wind pushed water from Lake Pontchartrain south. But this wind was measured. This was measured at about 100 miles per hour, category two. And what we know is that that wind did not create enough storm surge to top the levee. The storm surge was measured nine feet in the center of the lake. And the highest measurement that was actually taken at the southern part of the lake, right by the city, was 12 and a half feet. And then it failed. But we know the water did not come over the levee. And the levee goes up about 15 feet. So here Here's the news. The levee did not fail. The main levee did not fail, and the levee was rated for Category 3. Well, we think the wind was Category 2, so that makes sense. So what failed? On the industrial canal here, from the, from the water driven in this way, and on the 17th Street Canal here, from the water driven down here, the seawalls failed on those two canals. It was not the big levee. So I think when this is all over, what we're going to find is that there was some kind of engineering failure on these two seawalls. It was not a failure of the overall major New Orleans levee, levee system. That, that, so what happened was the 17th Street levee failed, and uh, about uh, and water filled up this area 8 to 10 feet below sea level here. The water out here, remember, was perhaps 12 feet above, so this is plus 12, and this is minus 8 or 9, so that's why we ended up with 20 feet of water in this part here of New Orleans. If those uh, flood walls hadn't failed, then the city would not have flooded because, again, the lake levee wasn't topped. Now, let's take a look at uh, some video we have of those levees, and you can actually see what was happening. There's the flood there. Now, this part of the city, obviously, people are walking around in, so this is not uh, in the deepest part, but there you can see it up to, all the way up to the roofs, so that's where the water was up to maybe 15, 20 feet. And here, what they're trying to do is drop sandbags in to slowly, slowly fill that breach. And that trend, that's just going to continue for a while. It's going to take a long time to fill those seawalls. That wall you saw there briefly, that is a flood wall. It's like the walls along I-95. They failed, broke over, and that's when the water came into the city. Well, we've seen it happen before our eyes, the drowning of a major American city. And we watched as authorities have been overwhelmed with the disaster and the lawlessness. Now we're finding out that the authorities need help themselves, overcome by Katrina's aftermath. CBS 4's Mike Kerr spent the day with the New Orleans police force, and he joins us live now from the hurricane zone. Mike? Well, Brian, uh, the police force here has been really stressed out over what's been going on here. It's been receiving a lot of criticism from people who say that they've not been doing enough here on the streets to save people, to rescue people. In fact, they've been accused of looting at times. So they're under a lot of stress here, and we've seen two police officers now reach the breaking point. I was downtown earlier this morning when I watched the police chief of this city crumble to the ground when he learned that a second police officer committed suicide. New Orleans Police Chief Edwin Compass collapses upon learning of the suicide of a police officer and close friend from his command staff, an officer he had just sent home suffering from too much stress. I saw him this morning. I said, Paul, take the day off. 
relax. Because he don't know where his wife is at. He thinks she's dead. He lost his house. He's been on the street. He was out there with me last night in that crowd. They were shooting at our vehicles. This is real. I don't know what you people out there think is going on here. This is real. This is the second time in 24 hours that a New Orleans cop has turned a gun on himself. How are the men and women here dealing with the, the news of the two officers killing themselves? Well, anytime you lose a police, police is like a brotherhood. You know, anytime you, anytime you lose a guy who wears a blue shirt, it's hard. You know, especially to that. You know, when they kill in a line of duty, you know, that's part of the job. You know, when you come on a job, you always know that risk is there. When, when, when you take your own life, you know, it's kind of hard because you can never understand suicide. I don't care how many times you try to sit down and analyze it, you never understand suicide. You know, you never know what goes on inside of people's heads. New Orleans cops have been under fire for days now for abandoning their posts. They've been accused of looting, and those who remain on this ragtag force hear constantly that they're not doing enough to help. Police ain't doing nothing. Why are they pulling guns out on people? We don't have no guns on us. What are we supposed to do? I'm trying to get out of here. They, they tend to judge law enforcement here, saying that, oh, they're, they're not doing their jobs or they don't know what they're doing. Does not doing their you? jobs. Does that bother you? Not doing their jobs. We got men who lost their families that's out there putting criminals in jail. We're getting in shootouts every night. They're shooting at our police cars. They tried to take me hostage. Not doing our jobs. Sir, no, sir, that's not me, sir, Chief. Sir, Chief, that's not me. Let's, that's let's, not me, you sir. Guys, you got to clean this up, Chief. I'm, I'm, I'm giving. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, 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 I'm giving. It's not his fault. No, 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 I'm sir. Sorry. I'm. I'm. Okay. I'm. I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm reflecting what we're I'm hearing sorry. out there. I apologize. Don't no, no problem. Edit that. No, no, no problem. I apologize. I talked to a lot of these men and women out here today and I can tell you that they are very tired and what a lot of people don't understand right now that many of these officers have still not contacted their family members. They've lost their homes. They haven't talked to their wives or their children. So they are under a lot of stress and we've seen that here today. We're live outside of New Orleans. Mike Kirsch, CBS 4 News. All right, Mike, it's unbelievable. Well, right now we're finding out that Shaquille O'Neal is lending a helping hand to the victims of Hurricane Katrina. Here's Jill Martin to tell us all about it. Jill? That's right, Brian. Shaq visited Baton Rouge earlier this week and got to witness the devastation firsthand. So now we're hearing pretty amazing news out of the O'Neill household. Shaq and Shawnee O'Neill, through their Real Models Foundation, are going to fix up 400 units in Dallas, Texas. They'll fix apartments up for survivors to live in and families that have been displaced. Now they're going to set up a location next Saturday so South Florida can bring items for these apartments. When we get that location, we will bring that to you. Currently, they are putting together a truckload of shoes to bring into Dallas, but huge news tonight what they are doing, fixing up 400 hundred apartments in Dallas, Texas, so families who have been displaced will be able to live there. We'll keep you updated on how you can bring some of your items to help these families. From now, from the breaking news desk, Jill Martin, CBS 4 News. All right, Jill, some good news. Thanks very much. There's more ahead on Hurricane 2005 and the path of Katrina. We'll check back in with Maggie Rodriguez in the Neighbors for Neighbors phone bank. It hurts. It hurts. But I ain't gonna give up. I'm gonna try to do my best to raise my kids. And you'll hear more personal stories from people just trying to live in the aftermath of the hurricane. Some of those victims evacuated to South Florida. You'll hear from them coming up. And I'll share my final thoughts later in this special broadcast. Hurricane Katrina in the path of the storm. I needed to sell in a hurry, however, I was willing to take a little longer to save $20,000. I went with my owner, and as it turned out, I did save the $20,000 and still sold my house in a week. I wouldn't consider selling my house any other way. Thanks, by owner. Thanks, by owner! Are you tired of having your garage look like this? Hi, I'm Michael Dagan. I'm the owner of Household Garages. The hurricane season is upon us. If a storm ever threatens, let us show you how we can get that extra space in the garage that you'll need. Housewall is South Florida's leading garage organization professionals, offering six different colors and over 50 accessories. So if a storm does threaten, give yourself that added space you need to bring in your outside furniture and get your car back into the garage. Call 866-345-WALL to schedule a free estimate or check us out at housewall.com. To hook, hold, or hide with Housewall Garage System.
when we decided to sell at a price in my head, and that's exactly what we got. With Bionor, everything was as advertised. The Bionor rep came over, and over coffee, we filled out the contract with the buyer. That was very reassuring. We saved nearly $20,000. Thanks, Thanks Bionor. Thanks, Bionor. As Survivor Guatemala begins, 16 new castaways are expecting a big twist. Oh, the suspense is just killing it. But this time, there won't be one. Nobody's going to get played. There'll be two. Whatever you do, you play as hard as you can. Two of the most popular past survivors are coming back. Oh, my God! To bring the game to a whole new level. Who are they? Find out on the premiere when Survivor Guatemala begins. CBS Thursday, September 15th. Were you one of six million Floridians left in the dark this past hurricane season? Never lose your power again. No matter what happens, you can be comfortable and secure with an emergency standby generator, a backup system that automatically restores your power within 60 seconds and protects you 365 days a year. Protect your lifestyle, your assets, your home, your entire family. Personalized power systems. Never lose your power again. Call today. Hurricane 2005 on CBS4 has been sponsored in part by South Florida Water Management District, by Bank Atlantic, and by Winn-Dixie. And welcome back. Hundreds of thousands of people have had their lives changed forever by Hurricane Katrina. CBS4's Ileana Varela is in the newsroom now with just some of the stories. It's hard to imagine. Oh, yeah? yeah, Brian, and the numbers alone are mind-boggling. Billions in damage, hundreds of thousands homeless, the thousands presumed dead. But it's the personal stories, the, the ones that take us one by one to the heart of the heartache. And here are just a few of those stories. People's lives changed forever in Katrina's wrath. In Biloxi, Mississippi, one man holding on to his family was forced to watch as his wife was swept away by the storm surge. I'm a dead girl. What happened? What the hell just split in half. Your house you know, split in half? Right here on Hollingham, Bay View, back, you know, we came up in the roof, all the way to the roof, and the water came and had just, just open up, divided. Who was at your house with you? My wife. Where is she now? Can't find her body. She gone. You can't find your wife? Oh, she told me, but she told me I tried. I, I, I hold her hand tight as I could. And she told me, you can't hold me. She said, take care of the kids and the grandkids. And my kids. Yesterday, Hardy Jackson went back to the place where he lost his wife. He wanted to say goodbye. Just, it hurts. It hurts. But I ain't going to give up. I'm going to try to do my best to raise my kids. In Gulfport, Hurricane Katrina ravaged the Copa Casino. Many workers heartbroken to see the place where they earned a living reduced to rubble. I pay my bills and everything, and now it's like I'm lost. I don't know where I'm going to go from here. I don't know what's going to happen to me and my family. This is my dad's job. A similar situation in Waveland, where a woman and her granddaughter look at what was their neighborhood. I think this is the roof to the house that was right there. An old friend of mine used to live in. Once a place for family cookouts, kids riding their bikes, and the sound of lawnmowers. Now it's a place of utter devastation. I'm worried. I just buried my sister last week. <laughs> and I've already lost my daughter. And now I don't know where my sons are or how they're faring or what they're doing or nothing else. I wish they would contact me. And there are so many, so many people in that predicament not knowing the fate of their loved ones. As you know, communication remains a huge problem, but the Internet is helping in that way. There are several websites, including CNN.com, CNN.com, where survivors can post their names so that loved ones know they're okay. In the newsroom, Ileana Barella, CBS4 News. It's just heartbreaking. Thanks, Ileana. And you've heard the stories. Now we're going to give you a chance to help. Up next, we'll go back to Maggie Rodriguez and the Neighbors for Neighbors phone bank. That's coming up as we continue on Hurricane 2005 in the path of Katrina. Hi, I'm attorney Robert J. Fensterscheid. People have been telling me their legal problems for over 25 years. That's why I created my website, tellrobert.com. When you log on, you can fill out a free legal evaluation or download a free copy of the latest living will. Injured? Tell Robert. Car accident? Tell Robert. Hurt by prescription drugs? Tell Robert. Please visit me at tellrobert.com or call me at 1-800-LAWMAN-8.
Hurricane season is now through November 30th. Are you and your family prepared for a hurricane or tropical storm? Ready yourself by mapping out a safety plan, being familiar with evacuation routes, and updating your hurricane preparedness kits with items from Winn-Dixie. While you're in the store, pick up our hurricane preparedness brochure for a checklist of must-have items for your kit. From batteries to bottled water, you'll find everything you need to stay prepared at your neighborhood Winn-Dixie. Are you tired of having your garage look like this? Hi, I'm Michael Dagan. I'm the owner of Household Garages. Hurricane season is upon us. If a storm ever threatens, let us show you how we get that extra space in the garage that you'll need. Housewall of South Florida's leading garage organization professionals, offering six different colors and over 50 accessories. So if a storm does threaten, give yourself that added space you need to bring in your outside furniture and get your car back into the garage. Call 866-345-WALL to schedule a free estimate or check us out at housewall.com. To hook, hold, or hide with Housewall Garage System. Bank Atlantic has been your neighbor for more than 50 years. Like you, we've seen our share of hurricanes. Last year alone, our community was seriously impacted by the storms. To ensure you and your families are well prepared, every Friday, all 76 of our branches are giving away free hurricane supplies. If a storm strikes, Bank Atlantic branches will offer mobile phone charging, free water, and will collect donations for local hurricane relief. We're open seven days a week. If a storm hits, you can depend on Bank Atlantic. Bank Atlantic, official sponsor of CBS4's Hurricane Preparedness Campaign. Bank Atlantic, Florida's most convenient bank. Open seven days a week. And welcome back. Let's go back now to Maggie in the Neighbors for Neighbors phone bank. Maggie. Brian, thank you, thank you, thank you. I have to say that to all of you. I've just been getting chills up here hearing these phones ring and hearing uh, all our volunteers talking to you and getting your donations. We want to thank you. $10 from Blanche Schneider, Leona Palapius, $25, Ernest Dinian, $1,000. Thank you very much. And thank you to one special lady, Nellie Rubio. She is the founder of Neighbors for Neighbors. Back in 1992, she founded this organization, and from that seed grew this. It's very gratifying for all of us. I know I speak for you, Nellie, to see that 13 years later, we are coming to the rescue where the need is far greater than any of us could have ever imagined. We will be here until midnight taking your calls, so please dial the number. Back to you, Brian. All right, Maggie. So much good being done there. Thanks very much. When we come back, I'll have some final thoughts on Hurricane Katrina and what we witnessed this past week. You're watching Hurricane 2005 in the past of Katrina. Hi, I'm Jeff Katz. 30 years ago, I founded Dolphin Carpet and Tile. This weekend, we're running Pergo-type laminate on sale for 99 cents. Hurry in. This sale ends Monday at 8 p.m. When I drove to work by myself, I spent thousands a year on gas. Can you imagine with today's gas prices? But since I started sharing my ride with Chris, Ricky, and Maria, I also share the cost. Carpooling to work is the way to go. Check it out. Save on gas, parking, maintenance, commute time. Enjoy the company. Help reduce pollution. Log on to 1-800-234-RIDE today and find out why carpooling is the smart move. Or call 1-800-234-RIDE. That's 1-800-234-RIDE. Did I mention it helps make new friends? I'm Larry Coulter of the Miami Hurricanes. Unfortunately, another hurricane season is rapidly approaching, so we need to be prepared. Hearst Shutter Company is the nation's oldest and largest hurricane shutter manufacturer and has been family owned since 1957. Hearst produces all of its hurricane products right here in their modern 60,000 square foot factory. Ask for Hearst products by name and use only licensed and insured companies and contractors. So take it from someone who knows a thing or two about hurricanes. Choose Hearst first. the Z's you've been dreaming of at Mattress Giant. It's the Mattress Giant Labor Day sale you've been waiting for. Save 50% off a luxurious Euro top in any size or Spring Air, a Consumer Digest Best Buy on sale from $499.99. Don't miss great savings and 0% interest for 24 months at Mattress Giant's Labor Day sale. Only at Mattress Giant. Were you one of 6 million Floridians left in the dark this past hurricane season? Never lose your power again. No matter what happens, you can be comfortable and secure with an emergency standby generator, a backup system that automatically restores your power within 60 seconds and protects you 365 days a year. Protect your lifestyle, your assets, your home, your entire family. Personalized power systems. Never lose your power again. Call today. 
Hi, I'm Jeff Katz. 30 years ago, I founded Dolphin Carpet and Tile. This weekend, we're running Travertine Marble on sale for $249 a square foot. Hurry in. This sale ends Monday at 8 p.m. Hurricane 2005 on CBS4 has been sponsored in part by House Wall Garage System, by Personalized Power Systems, by Hearst Hurricane Shutters, and by El Dorado Furniture. And a few final thoughts. I never thought we would see a hurricane disaster that would be harder on people than Hurricane Andrew. Even though I and everybody else that studies hurricanes knew that New Orleans was a catastrophe waiting to happen, the potential for disaster there was a known quantity studied over and over, books written on the subject. When Andrew hit, it was a new phenomenon. Never before had such a storm hit a major American city. But after witnessing the pain and suffering and death in New Orleans, it seems like Andrew never happened. The lessons weren't learned, or shamefully in Washington, they were ignored. America let Americans rot and die in the sun and the swill of a well-predicted cesspool. How could it happen? After what we went through here, now we can only help in every way we can and be doubly sure it never happens again. And so let's remind you, the Neighbors for Neighbors volunteers are standing by. The numbers are there. You can call 305-597-4404 or 877-411-4242. Please help any way you can. That's our special report. So now for Maggie Rodriguez and all of us here at CBS4 News, good night. Are you tired of having your garage look like this? Hi, I'm Michael Dagan. I'm the owner of Household Garages. The hurricane scene is upon us. If a storm ever threatens, let us show you how we can get that extra space in the garage that you'll need. Housewall South Florida's leading garage organization.